are now listening to the sounds of around that time a little bit before it was in 2004 that i signed with them 2005 when a healthy distrust came out but all those early 2000s hip-hop labels or other types of labels were looking for the next eminem because eminem was just popping off so hard commercially Mm -hmm. and they were they were out there hard like atlantic records was sniffing around everywhere. They were signing white rappers left and right, and then shelving their their albums. Um, <clears throat> I got approached by a couple different labels, and they gave me bad vibes. They they made me feel like that, you know they were going to try to craft me into what they thought would be sellable. And Epitaph was the first bigger label to to approach me and just be like, "Yo, we get what you're doing. You have your fan base." we'll never tell you what to do because you already know what you're doing and no one's doing it like you. So do you, and let's do this. Let's put yeah. this fucking out. Let's make this bigger than it is. That's so, awesome. you know, I, I helped make them a lot of money. They helped me make a lot of money at the same time. Um, that's why I signed to them. And like the novelty of being the first rapper signed to epitaph is cool too. Uh, I mean, at the time I was like, yeah, that's fucking great. Mm-hmm. I just wish I didn't, do a three album record deal because I didn't understand how long that would take in my career and how much money that would end up costing me down the line. But uh, those early stages of that in 2004 and 2005, beautiful beautiful period for me because that also when the biggest tours were happening and I got to play legendary venues such as the Fillmore Mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. It was was cool. But um, they also saw... uh, a similarity between what we were doing in indie hip hop and what they were doing with the indie punk scene. Oh, absolutely. Earlier on, they saw uh, the how the fan base was growing, how we were touring heavy in small towns, which was not a thing that hip hoppers really did. Mm-hmm. Like the bigger tours, it was always big tours, there's always arena tours. And here we are driving to Bumblefuck nowhere, playing whatever and 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 building upon that every time we went back out on the road and he saw that he's the president was andy kaufman uh, Kaufman, <laughs> andy kaufman. um <laughs> so he saw when i played california he would come to the shows and he would just watch me drag my suitcase in open the suitcase and then there's all my cds and shirts and i just start selling right away to the fans he's <laughs> awesome. like oh, i've never i haven't seen this in so long so i think like it hit the nostalgic buttons for him and um he championed me big time, helped me get a lot of, um, he just helped boost my signal in a lot of ways. So I appreciate that. But that's what it was like. That was, you know, they, they were hands off. They were big fans of mine. That was a big deal to me. Like they like really truly loved my music and um, they let me do whatever I wanted. Nice. And that's always the best. Yeah. When you get your free chance to be, free, you know, to have do yeah. whatever you think is right. No one telling you no is always perfect do you now do you that know no in a curse though that yeah. was a blessing and a curse yeah, like, yeah. i wanted that but maybe i needed somebody to tell me certain things something. but whatever. sometimes it's always good to have a little bit of a leash on the on the project but 